It is the Beaver Banter Podcast. I'm CJ Baumgartner, my co-host Ian Rivers. And Ian, another great day to be a Beaver as the Bemidji State men's basketball team gets a huge win over Augustana in the opening round of the NSIC men's basketball playoff. I believe there was a stat from the uh, from Bemidji State University's website that said uh, the basketball team advanced to the NSIC quarterfinal for the first time in 10 years. So a big, big deal, Ian. Wow, yeah, that is that is a big deal. 10 years without getting to the quarterfinal. Um, and now we're there. You know, we're back. So I think, like we said, this was – this was kind of the the minimum. We didn't want to just say, yeah, we were a four seed and then we got upset in the first round of the tournament at home. Um, we had this good season already. Let's not put a damper on that to end it. Let's at least go out and win the first round of the playoffs and get to the Pentagon. And that's where we'll be um, Saturday at 1.30. So um, that's cool. That's awesome. How they get to Sioux Falls will be interesting considering uh, that like I-29 has been shut down for like the last four days. But uh That'll be the that'll be the fun part. Yeah, they were talking about that a little bit on the broadcast. And the good thing for Bemidji is we didn't have to leave like that night, you know, or, or tomorrow or today even, you know, uh, since we could just stay where we were. Sioux Falls kind of just like that's where they're from, or I should say Augustana is from Sioux Falls anyway. So even though they lost, um, they have to find a way down to Sioux Falls regardless. So, um, yeah, I mean, congratulations on winning your bet. Uh, with Marcus, that's that's got to be a Let's little leaving. I've so. not reached out to him as of this point yet, but uh, we'll have to pick out some BSU apparel and uh, and send it his way. Uh, but interestingly enough, in this game, I, I I'm I'm just kind of getting my look through again of kind of the final box score after last night. I had a chance to sit on this game, and we both kind of mentioned it to each other during the game. But John Sutherland, man, he continues to to show out during uh during uh, this season for the beavers and he scored a career high 28 points last night shot 80 percent from the floor and uh just again helped will the beavers to victory and had a uh, wicked dunk early in the second half yeah he was insane i think right after i sent you that message in the first half he had just gone on like a he had gone on like a five minute tear where he was like the only one on the floor that was doing anything and it, it wasn't like he was you know, because if you're watching like James Harden, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, he's the only one on the on the team that does anything. It's like yeah, he doesn't move the ball at all. He's, it's hard for anybody to do anything because he's just hogging it and he's at the free throw line all the time. But um, he was just dominating the game. He would get steals, tip passes and then like rebounds. He does. He did the whole the whole enchilada yesterday. Like you said, um, what did he finish with? Twenty eight points, twenty eight and nine. Um, and then, yeah, one steal three assists. So, I mean, he had a great game Um, and he was a big part of why they won. And uh, the crowd was great. Um, It was a shame that the students sit on the same side as the broadcast angle uh, because it kind of made it look like just any other normal night uh, Mm -hmm. in the BSU gymnasium because there wasn't that much of a local outing. Uh, There was a good turnout of students, I thought. Oh, yeah, the students, um, you could see some of the people that would post about the game on Twitter afterwards. Um, you could see the uh, the crowd reaction, and there were so many students there. Um, and I believe Micah actually tweeted about it as well, Micah Freeze, um, that there was like two normal bleachers where you would normally like have have struggles filling up the first one, and there's two of them full of students. Right. Um, so that's that was really cool to see. Well, and even I remember because we've talked about this before. The student, it was hard to get students to come out to games because it's the same night as hockey. It's the middle of winter. It's really cold. It's a Saturday afternoon. You know, like it's just the team hasn't the teams haven't been you know stellar in the NSIC, so it was really hard to get them out there. But not this season, and not last night. Uh, maybe with the maybe with the giant snowstorm, maybe through a wrench if you had to drive. If you lived off campus, but for anybody who lived on campus, it's an easy walk through the tunnels to get there. And, That's such an underrated gym. thing, too, of like people don't realize like Bemidji State has a, a little bit of a hockey attendance issue whenever the team's not doing fantastic. And it's because, you know, the rink isn't on campus or for all intents and purposes for Bemidji, it's not even near campus, really. It's on the yeah. other side of the lake. And so that for a lot of people, not for me. Um, but for a lot of people, that is a true deterrent on whether, oh, do I want to take, you know, it's only a 15 minute drive max 
but do I want to take that 15 minute? Do I really want to drive to the stadium tonight? Talk about um, you in college. You live like walk. on way on the other side of the lake. Yeah, we were because we were on the other side of town. So um, once we moved out, of, moved off campus, it was like a you're further a north. Yeah, yeah, we were we were north of town. So it was a haul. But I mean, that was what I like to do. And so for me, it was it was fine and it was worth it. But for anybody who had, you know, college students who had weekend plans um i'm sure you understand what i mean uh or, you know or even just had to work or just didn't well, want to go yeah. yeah getting off campus and so uh, being on campus is is a big thing that helps um bsu basketball um not that they would probably ever have a an off-campus facility for that but um i, th- I do think that's part of what helps uh hurts the hockey teams you know not that we want to switch to hockey right now um but you know that is a part of the attendance problem for that but um yeah i I would attribute some of the attendance issues it's almost like when they talk about los angeles sports where you kind of have to be relevant right because there's so much to choose to do in in los angeles um between entertainment and just everything else you can do and then oh do i want to go to a rams game this year no i don't because everybody on the team is bucks a seat yeah Uh, And it's the same thing. Like the Lakers aren't good. Well, the Lakers are probably the worst example because like they're the Lakers still, but you know what I mean? Like if basketball is not good, people are going to go to hockey or people are just going to stay home. Like, yeah, just, it's not enough of a basketball town. I don't think uh, where it just kind of draws people just because there's a game going on. You kind of have to have that success to get people in the gym. Um, And this season we saw that. Exactly. And, you know, especially because it's a division two men's basketball program compared to a division one men's hockey program. So if you're going to choose to go see one, you'd probably choose the division one program. So that I think plays a huge factor and just that it's a more hockey centered community. I mean, it's what, two and a half hours from Canada, not even. So, I mean, it's, it's just fits a little bit more there. That being said, I think we've both touched on before that Minnesota has a very underrated basketball appreciation and community. But like you said, it's just harder. It's a little bit there that way. And, and again, it's, you know, there, it's just a high school gym that Bemidji basically plays in. It's a big high school gym. Cause it's, it's been around forever and it's a really great atmosphere cause it's intimate and it's small. And if you can get just even a small, but dedicated group of fans in there, it's a very nice atmosphere and a very fun atmosphere for basketball. And we saw that last night and it really helped Bemidji cause there were some points in this ball game. They had a pretty slow start and were able to turn things around and, coming down from down 10 points early and just get that offense humming. I think you could really see the movement in Bemidji state's offense. They could really move the ball anywhere they wanted to go. And you could see it in the case of, it felt like one of those nights where whatever they drew up was going to work. I think there was a play in the second half where uh, I don't know if it was Sutherland or whoever, but I think it was a lob up to Kone. And uh, there was like a guy sets up like a, a pick for him maybe a seal underneath the basket on the low block. And he just lobs it up there. And it's something that only really works if you're playing really well. I'm I'm describing the play really terribly right now, but like all I know is it was a dunk by Bemidji state. And it's just one of those plays that you could see get set up and you could see the guy underneath in the lane, kind of know what he's doing, setting his guy up to seal the other guy off. And it just felt like whatever Bemidji state wanted to do was working last night for a lot of the game. And that helps a lot. This wasn't, they had to skate by a well-coached and good Augustana team and they did it at home. And now they set themselves in position against Wayne state. Yeah. I mean, both teams shot the lights out. Um, I just, my phone just went off next to me. It was a Twitter notification of Micah's tweet that I was referencing last night. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, it just popped up and I don't know why, because I had already seen the tweet. Um, But yeah, Micah said things I've never seen at BSU basketball game before tonight. Uh, Two ticket lines uh, are a ticket line stretching uh, to the back, stretching back to the door. Two student sections of bleachers, uh, concession lines, about 20 people deep and first half defense chance. So uh, interesting that my phone seems to be listening to the podcast. But um, yeah, I think it was great to have this playoff on campus um, to get the students really engaged. Um, but yeah, talking more about the game, uh, the shooting for Bemidji was 60% from the field, 50% from the three point range and a solid 76% from the stripe. And Augustano wasn't that far behind, uh, 54% from the field, slightly worse, um, but slightly better from both other categories, 52 from downtown and 50 or uh, I'm sorry, 79 nearly from the stripe. So 
it was it was a really good game. I, I was very entertained um, from start to finish. Uh, I actually turned it on. I think it was 14 to five when I turned it on. And I was like, oh, great. Like, this is hopefully not going to turn into one of those like, you know, a, a, a game like the Duluth game where we're just kind of out of it from the beginning. Um but they showed that they could get back into it. And the three point shooting was lights out. Like you said, there was two of those dunks in the second half that really got the crowd up off their feet. Um, I can't remember who it was. Uh, was it Okoye on the other team that the uh, somebody, somebody in the student section must've been like chirping him all game. Cause somebody was, somebody was in his head um, every time he would, every time he would shoot and the announcer's, noticed that they were like looking at the looking at the students every time he would run down the court. I I don't know. I can't remember. I, I or hearing that, but I also didn't have the volume up for a lot of the game. But yeah, I mean that's again, it's the fun of having a small and intimate gym like Bemidji State does and getting that environment in there and getting that that atmosphere which I think has been I think was really huge in that game because there was a point late in the game where it really did feel like things were unraveling a little bit for Bemidji state. I think they had like an eight point lead with like 50 seconds left. I'm like, okay, can we just this for all intents and purposes is over, right? Let's just run out the clock. And then uh, may, I think uh, uh, Augustana makes like just a heave up three. And it's like, Oh, all of a sudden it's like a four point game with 30 seconds left. This is a little too close for comfort. And Bemidji state made some key free throws at the end to just put themselves ahead, which are huge, massively huge free throws. But there was a point there where things almost unraveled for Bemidji State, but it felt like as it was unraveling, and it was in this way against Moorhead the last few minutes of that game against MSUM, is like things things could very easily fall apart here, but the Bemidji State team did a really nice job of just not like freaking out, not making any spectacular plays, but just being like just playing basketball. And just making a play and just knowing that, hey, we're going to just do our thing and we just think we're better than them. And I think that was huge because they're going to have to go do it against now better teams when you get down to the Pentagon. Yeah, it's hard to not assume that the lead is like safe when you get under a minute, you're up by eight, which is three possessions. Um, But you still have to get like that one bucket or hit those two free throws or get one stop. Like if you don't get the basket, and you let them defend you, and then they go back down and score again, and now it's like all of a sudden, like you said, it's a three-point game, and you have to hit these free throws. Otherwise, they can go down and tie it. It's like, man, just take care of business. And they, and they did a pretty good job of it for all intents and purposes. Um, you know, it came down to like the last six seconds, and they just had to make two free throws, and that's what they did, four-point lead. Uh, and then Augustana, I believe, got their shot blocked by uh, Momo Kone. So, um, and I did we touch on the fact that – uh Kone and Sutherland are all NSIC members? Not yet, but that's a huge step for them. Uh, Sutherland is all NSIC first team, and Kone is all NSIC second team. Huge honors, and honestly well-deserved, because whenever we've talked about this men's basketball team all season long, even before the hype train seemed to get real with them, it was always Sutherland and Kone who were always at the forefront and always doing things. And the one thing about Bemidji State, Now, they've had issues in the past of trying to keep some of their younger guys through the program. They've had a lot of people transfer out, but over the last maybe six years. But at the same time, I think what Boshi does really well is he does the transfer portal, maybe isn't the right word, but he has used the transfer pool, a lot of JUCOs, a lot of getting guys to come in and, and help out the program. And that's what's helped out a lot with that, with Kone being a transfer, I, I believe. And then with, uh, Sutherland being a transfer from UMD. Now he wasn't a a Juco transfer, but at the same time, just being able to kind of on the fly, grab some of these guys and throw them together. And some years it hasn't worked. And this is a year where it definitely has. And it's been a big, uh, a big boon for Bemidji state this season, having Kone and Sutherland be as productive as they are. And especially for, uh, for this team to have it come together at the right time in this year. Yeah, uh, Trinity Yoder also, um, to give her credit, I believe, was named first team all at SIC on the women's side. Well deserved. Uh, so, yes, very well deserved for her. Um, but let's take a look kind of deeper into the tournament now because we do have a game coming up uh, against Wayne State on Saturday. That is at one thirty, And then I believe if it makes sense to me, I haven't looked at the bracket bracket, but uh, Northern State and Minot State are the other two teams that play that day. Um, so I would believe that we would probably 
play the winner of that game if we were to advance. Um, and then the other games on Sunday are Duluth versus Upper Iowa and MSU Moorhead versus Sioux Falls. So um, Saturday, I don't know, man. I, we've only seen Wayne State once this year, and we lost by 15. I didn't catch any of that game. Um, I'll have to go back and like look at the box score really quick. But give me your thoughts on that game, CJ. I mean, look, they, they've gotten about as far as we expected them. They won this first game. Uh, and now you have a team in, in Wayne State who's had a bye, so they haven't had to worry about prepping for a game and doing whatever. And it gets you into that old debate of would you rather have rest or would you rather have momentum? And I, to be honest, I'm not quite sure because it's Division Two basketball. Once you get into this tournament time, really anything can happen. Like we've talked about before on the flip side with Bemidji State having such a dud against UMD is sometimes you just – can't shoot or sometimes you're just really good at the line or you can do all these other things. So it comes down to one game, I think first and foremost, but with this Bemidji state team, again, it's Sutherland and Kone carrying this team. Now the devil's advocate could say, no, look, Bemidji state barely skated by Augustana. And it took a career night from Sutherland to kind of push them over the envelope. But at the same token, this is still a really good basketball team. And they've been having Sutherland and Kone lead them all year. And I think it's going to, start with those two. And uh, honestly, uh, it's going to be a really fun game because I think if you're Bemidji state, you're rolling, you have the confidence. And I think honestly, just now you're at the point where if you're Boshi, you can say, why not us? We're now they're the underdogs throughout this tournament. They're going to be considered an underdog. So now you can play with that. We got nothing to lose mentality. And I think that helps out a lot too. Yeah. I mean, underdog for, for you would assume for the most of it, I guess if we won and Minot state won, then Minot state finished below us, you know, but the likelihood of both of those things happening, I guess is probably pretty small, but, um, you know, like you said, some of that, like you said, Sutherland needing a career game, that's just like tournament basketball, man. I, I beg anybody to go back and look at any final four team from the past, like 10 years and just look at their path from the start of the tournament to the final four or to the national championship. I remember when Virginia won, um, they, they had just been upset the year before they were the first one seed that got beat by a 16. And then they were on the ropes again that year uh, for the first half. And they had to pull away kind of at the end uh, from another 16 seed. Um, Auburn barely beat a, um, I believe Auburn was a, was a four or a five or something like that. They barely beat the 12 seed in the first round. Like, took a missed buzzer beater um, and they could have gone home and they ended up in the final four that year playing Virginia. And so it's like, it doesn't matter how you look. It's a game by game thing at this point. And uh, kind of looking at the box score from the game against Wayne state seems like a little bit of a slow start. We were down 14 at half and we ended up only losing by 15. So that means we lost the second half by one. And it was a pretty horrendous shooting night for both teams. BSU shooting 40% from the floor, only 21% from uh three point and 53 percent from the line um and then not too much better for northern or wayne state uh 45 percent from the field goal uh 40 percent respectable from downtown and then 44 from the free throw stripe so uh it seems like bsu did a pretty good job defensively it just they probably needed to get into the game earlier i'm not sure if it was a slow start like we saw against duluth or if it was just kind of a, a late first half run uh, that got Wayne State their big lead. But I do think it's a winnable game, that self-division. There's not a whole lot of teams in that division that really scare me. I mean, if you go look at the standings, which I'll try to pull up really quick, I think BSU would have probably been anywhere in that dogfight in the South. Like, they could have still been fighting for the South division uh, coming down to the last the last weekend there because it was so tight. And I think that, uh, yeah, BSU finished – 13 and nine. And that's exactly what Wayne state finished in the conference. Um, so none of these, none of these South teams are really necessarily that much better on paper. Um, and Wayne state only 18 and 10 on the season We're 19 and 10. So it's not like they're, you know, a team like Northern state who's 23 and five on the season and has only lost half the games that we've lost. Um, this is a very beatable opponent. And like you said, we have the momentum coming off of, you know, um, our first, playoff win in six years five years uh 2018 i think that was 20, but, yeah the 2019 so four years 19 four years yeah. um but yeah first quarterfinal in 10 years you got all the momentum um and you can either let that be kind of a, a hangover or you can you can keep the momentum going that's Look, that's really your two options 
Look, Ian, I don't want to jump to any conclusions here, but did you know uh, 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 if you were doing some kind of Bemidji State coverage at all during the men's basketball team's last postseason win? And maybe is there a correlation for the fact that all of a sudden, now that we start covering them again, that Bemidji State has won in the NSIC tournament? Hmm. That's interesting. That's you know, interesting. They say correlation doesn't equal causation, but uh, I I firmly disagree on this one. I think uh, I think it has something to do with that. So I think uh, I think old Boshi and and company need to give us a big thank you for uh, for the pod. But looking at back at that Wayne State game uh, back in late January, so not about a month ago, uh, when they had to to play that game, Sutherland ended up getting a double double in that one, uh, but only getting fourteen points. So for all intents and purposes, Wayne State doing a a good job of kind of holding him down in that one, but this was just something where, and I'm looking at this game recap now on bsubeavers.com. And, and from what it says, Ian is that uh, Wayne state was able to get uh, it was there. Both teams were kind of running with each other for the first part of the first half, but then at halftime, Wayne state was able to get a 35 21 lead and pretty much just hung on. So I think the thing for Bemidji state, if you're looking for adjustments from that first one is just obviously starting fast, maybe not even fast, but just starting well and just not digging yourself in a hole and then try and that's what Bemidji State avoided against Augustana last night is they got down double digits early and then clawed their way back right away and then had like a four or two point lead at halftime and just kind of always hung in that majority. It got to eight points and then I got down to three and then I got back up. To, so playing in the driver's seat is going to be key for this team as well. And I think that's pretty much uh, pretty much my last bit on this basketball. I think Bemidji State has the potential to pull off the upset. And I think, you know, forget it. I'm going with it. I'm calling my shot. Bemidji State's winning this game. I'm, I'm, let's go. Let's go. Roll beeves. Let's go. I mean, yeah, I think they can win this game. I, I do. Uh, whether they will or not, I think it's going to be another game, kind of like the Augustana one, if I had to predict it. I'm um, sorry, that might be a little bit boring and kind of the cop-out answer. Oh, it's going to be a great basketball game, but um, I do think it'll be a close game. Um, and then I was wrong, actually. I clicked on on the Tournament Central site. Uh, we would play the winner of the Minnesota State University Mankato and Sioux Falls game um, in the second or in the semifinals. And so that would give us not only a team who we have beaten recently in uh, MSU Moorhead and not a team that's beaten us both times we played them in Northern State, um, but the other option would be Sioux Falls. And the only game we played against them was, of course, the one point overtime loss heartbreaker where we were up by like four with 10 seconds left and ended up turning the ball over and giving up two buckets and like losing the exact opposite of what almost happened last night. Exactly. And so yeah. those are two beatable teams. And you would have an extra day rest because those teams don't play until Sunday. They would have to play back to back to back games uh, to win this tournament. Uh, we would have a day off on Sunday uh, and a day of rest to prepare for the winner of that game. So, man, I don't want to gas up the Beavers too much, but I think, you know, as as long as we don't play Northern State in that um, championship game on Tuesday, I I don't think there's a ton of teams in this tournament field that, like, scare the wits out of me other than Northern State. Um and, and, you know, even Northern State, we've seen them twice now. It's really hard to beat a team three times in a season. So um, I think there's a realistic chance this Beavers team could make a run. I don't know if I'm going to predict it, um, but I think they're going to win one game and probably lose in the semifinals. Um, that's that's my prediction. All right, roll beeves. Let's move on to men's hockey. Ian, first news and note. This comes courtesy of the Bemidji State men's hockey uh, Twitter page and feel jealous of them if you want to. It says thank you to Q Doba in Bemidji for their meal today as they head down to play St. Thomas in their last series of the year. So they got to make a little Doba stop, probably uh, at the you know right by the holiday there as you're uh, heading out of town. So they got uh, they got a chance to to gas up if you will uh, on their way down. Yeah, that sounds really good right now. Actually, last night I was really craving a burrito, but of course I was snowed into my house. So um, that's terrific that they got that. I'm very happy for them. <laughs> really good for them. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Uh, Minnesota State, uh, we took two points. And I guess that's all I was asking. I, like I said, get something from this weekend to help yourself. Uh, and so that's that's what they did. They got two points, overtime win. Who else uh, but Kyle Loft? Uh, scoring an overtime game winner against Mankato. Um, he has a knack for that this season. So uh, we might not be done beating them in overtime this this season. So um, knock on wood. 
Um, but yeah, taking two points out of that, it does help us. Obviously, it would have been nice to like get six points, but I don't ever think that that was necessarily on the cards with how we've been playing late this season. Um, and in terms of behind us, teams that are catching up, Ferris State and Northern Michigan played. Um, and it, I guess it's kind of the best case scenario. Uh, Northern Michigan ended up like manhandling fair state just like, absolute domination like it was like nine to two and eight to three i think were the two final scores if i'm remembering that correctly i was like what on earth so maybe northern michigan has finally woken up um or maybe they just were upset that they had gotten swept uh uh i think it was on the weekend prior and they're so used to splitting and so they just had to make up for it so they could be 500 because literally that's what they've been all season. Every time I look, they're 12 and 12 in the conference and 16 and 16 overall. They've never gone to overtime. Like they've never tied. They've never gone to a shootout. It's just like, what? Perfectly, but, perfectly balanced. That's all as things, things should, should be. be. So, um, yeah, uh, now we play St. Thomas with an opportunity to lock up home ice. And uh, basically all we need to do is get four points and we ensure that we get – uh, that four seed because four points would put us at 40 and the best that Northern Michigan or Ferris state could both do would be 39. So um, tiebreakers, I believe would give most of the tiebreaking rules to Northern Michigan because of regulation wins. Um, so I think that that is, and, and there's some still that haven't been fully decided because obviously there's still two games left to be played. Um, but yeah, I think most of the tiebreakers would land with Northern Michigan right now. Uh, and then I do believe Bemidji would be behind them in front of Ferris State. But Ferris State plays Lake Superior State, and I don't know what to think of them right now. They were kind of the hottest team in the conference for a while. And now after the last two weekends, splitting with Bemidji State uh, and getting clobbered by uh, Northern Michigan, I don't, I don't really know what to make of them. And Lake Superior State's always a tough out. So, yeah, I think I think that they'll probably not be able to pass the Beavers. I'm going to hope that we can take care of business and kind of at least get like three points. Um, but ultimately, you just got to try to get anything you can um, to make sure that even if Northern Michigan splits, you know, and you get one point, you still are one point clear of them. So, you know, get anything you can. But um, ultimately, that three seed is still up for grabs because if Northern Michigan sweeps and we sweep, we're the three seed because Bowling Green would be one point behind us. We'd be at 42. They'd be at 41. So we could finish anywhere between four or three and six still going into this final weekend. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, Saturday we win and, uh, you know, I don't know what I hope because obviously if I hope that Bowling Green wins, then that means we're basically the four seed. Um, but if Northern Michigan wins, then that means we're still not safe. So, Whatever happens is going to happen, I guess, at this point. We're just going to have to play it night by night. Um, but I guess we're kind of lucky that we drew St. Thomas. Um, they don't have a ton to play for. I think yeah. they can still climb up a little bit. Yeah, they could still climb up all the way to five if they were to sweep us and the other two teams lost. Um, but, you know, so, yeah, that's 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 the other thing that could happen. We could get home ice even by getting swept if Northern Michigan and Fair State both get swept too. Um, but that would just be like the nastiest way to back into that home ice. Um, Congratulations. You got a home ice, even though you got swept. It's a good thing. The teams behind you just. Epic. That would be the way we would play St. Thomas in the first round. If that were to happen. So like, maybe, that would that's, be the weirdest. maybe that's the ideal situation. I don't Here know. I was thinking in, in November, I'm like, yeah, we're going to play St. Thomas first round. It's going to be awesome because I thought they were going to get last in the conference and we were going to win it. <laughs> and now we're here thinking we might get swept by them and play them in the first round. But um, I ultimately think I'd rather play Ferris in the first round. So I'm hoping that whatever happens leads to Northern Michigan dropping either below us or them finishing as the five and we finish as the three. Um, Cause I don't know what I just watched this weekend, but I don't really want to have to deal with that type of offensive firepower in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, but if we do, I would hope that we're at home. Yeah. I mean, Look, Bemidji states they've made their bed and they're going to have to lie in it no matter what. Because, uh, again, we're talking about getting the four seed, which means, great, we get home ice in the first round, but then you're on the road 
theoretically the rest of the time or having to to be on opposing ice. So that's yeah, unless there's like two other upsets in the first round and then right. it's like, oh, cool. By default, we are exactly the number two seed now. Yeah. So th- that's the thing is there's it's going to be a tough road for them. And that's the position that they've put themselves in right now. So, you know, whether obviously you got you can't get to the second round without winning the first one. So they need the home ice. And that is important. But uh, I think they need to worry more about setting themselves up for the postseason run. And to do that, and now they did it last year. They had a nice uh, CCHA tournament run and almost, almost got back into the NCAA tournament. So Ian, to get themselves on that run, and in turn, that that also implies that they handle St. Thomas this weekend. What is Bemidji State going to have to do to gear themselves up for that? Well... Uh, it's going to have to be more of the same things they did last year and earlier this year, just playing solid team defense. Like there's so many over the last two months, there's been so many like sloppy giveaways and like every goal that we give up, it just seems like the other team didn't just make a good move or a good play. Like they didn't just beat us. It's like, we kind of, we got the third assist on that. You know what I mean? It's like, what are we doing to ourselves here? Um, so just less sloppy play. Um, we can't have any of those goaltending errors by Shoal, you know, like against who was that Lake state that he got like pulled in the first period. Um, we just have to have to button up, play solid hockey. Um, especially, you know, if you were to win that first round series and then you're most likely going on the road to Houghton or um, Mankato, you know, in the second round, depending on who wins that uh, this weekend, uh, which, by the way, Tech will probably be thanking us for taking anything from Mankato so they have an easier time. And I'm I'm rooting for Tech because I'm sick of seeing Mankato win this conference every single regular season. Ian Rivers uh, so if it can't Michigan be us, Tech. It's like one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's it's <laughs> like it's like the lesser of two evils right now, man. I'm just sick of – I just want it to change. Like – Maybe this evil should win this time. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think just because I know that this team can do like we we go out and we play well against Michigan Tech and we still lose both of those games, you know, a couple weeks ago. Um, so we know we can play, um, but ultimately the goal scoring is going to have to be a little bit better. Um, Leighton Road and Ross Armour have been fantastic uh, late down the stretch here, but uh, hopefully we can get some some surprise goal. Like, uh, somebody somebody on the roster, just throw a dart at the roster sheet. And that person is going to be like the X factor. They're going to have like five goals between this series and next series. And it's going to help carry us through the playoffs or whatever. That's, that's what it's going to have to be. Somebody's going to have to step up. One last question here about, about hockey. What's more important for this postseason run? Is it going to be that finding that go-to score or is it going to be better play in net? If you had to choose which one, which one would be would you take? Like if you had one of two options, you can either get increased play out of the goalie position, or you find more of a a, a go to score for the postseason. If you had to choose, you can only get one. Which well, one? I do you think go most with? of the time you're probably going to go with the goaltending. Um, Schul's already been pretty goal, uh, pretty good this year. Uh, obviously, he's had his inconsistencies, um, and maybe he's not been as good as people have hoped uh, because of what we saw out of him as a freshman last year. But um, either way. Uh, if you can get a hot goaltender, like that could go for any of these teams. Like if, um, you know, Lake State's goaltender, whose name is slipping my mind right now for some reason, I apologize. But um, if he got hot, like they could, you know, you just got to win a couple games. If he stands on his head and only lets in one goal or shuts out a team, all you need is one or two goals, you know, and and Bemidji can do that. So, so I think having some lights out goaltending from Scholl would probably be the easy answer for me there, because that's, that's kind of the thing that you look at in a lot of championship winning hockey teams. Most of them um, look at Dryden McKay last year for the, for the Mavericks. Like he was fantastic and they made it all the way to uh, all the way to the the championship game until they ran into the buzzsaw that was the Denver pioneers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's always the answer with Bemidji state. It's an interesting case. Like you said, with the goaltending hasn't necessarily been bad. It's, but you know, at the same time, you can't win if you can't score. And it's been that kind of kind of balance with the Beavers. Ian, we have like three minutes left before Zoom kicks us off. Is there any other uh, news and notes you want to talk about with the Beavers uh, before we uh, sign off? Um, women's hockey has their tournament starting up. 
Uh, I don't have a Speaking lot of, of expectations. running into buzz saws. Yeah, they play number one Ohio State. Um, if there's any consolation, I think of the top four, if you put all the scores together, Ohio State might have been our best opponent this year, just out of the four games. And it was still like 21 to three. So <laughs> it's not saying much, but, um, you know, I'm praying for them. I'm hoping that they can they can steal a game or steal steal two somehow. <laughs> but I think stealing um, a game would just be remarkable. Just, just not stuff. getting blown out. You know, if you can lose that game two to one or three to one or four to two or something, you know, go out and score a couple goals. Um, you know, just don't get embarrassed, don't get blown out like you know, some of those Wisconsin games we saw earlier this year. Um, and it's playoff hockey, so I'm I'm sure it'll be a little bit tighter, but um Best of luck to the girls. They're probably going to need it. Number one team in the country, and you got to win two out of three at least. Going on the road. Going on the road to Columbus. It's going to be tough, but hopefully we're still talking about them next week, uh, and it's not just to wrap up their season and put a, a poorly folded bow over it because it's been <laughs> it's been one to forget. But we've you know we got time for that next week. This has been the Beaver Banter Podcast. Check us out. I'm CJ Baumgartner, Ian Rivers, my co-host. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Also find Beaver Banter on YouTube as well. We'll talk to you guys next week.